cheap rocker. Don't like to get ill, but if I have to, I kill. So believe me, boy, you got to chill. Three days later, the LP went gold. So what you saying? Like, yeah, we on the ground funk, keep the crossover. Jackhammer in the helmet that glows, cause she's a gold Twin in the raw, so you can see your big boy is what I be. See, I just can't my thing. It's a big payback. I grab the mic and grip it hard like it's my last time to shine. I'm all muscling, busting like we're looking for weapons of mass destruction. Hoodies on, dress down, 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 down. As I slow kick down, like baby. Slow down, baby. Slow down, baby. So you can get rugged, tough. What's the deal? It's your boy, boy. I'm mad, man. What he said. You know where I'm at. You know what it is, man. I'm in the building right now. That Harlem dude with that Brooklyn bounce. My man DJ Ramos not in the building today. He will be back next week. But for right now, the show goes on. You know what I mean? I have a hip hop legend in the building. Phenomenal guy. You know what I mean? I, Paris Smith, EPMD. Stop. Yes, yo. Chilling, chilling. What's going on, baby? Yo, everything is <laughs> good. Got the Round two. On. Yeah. All that, man. Yes. Yeah, Super you know, Doopy Link with the fisherman hat. What's up? 50 says how you flee from the spot in the black sports car. I think it was an IROC, but the windows were tinted and they couldn't get a look. Wow. The smoke from the rubber he cooked. The big payback. <laughs> what's up? What's up? Yo, I don't even know where to start, man. You are like, <laughs> yo, I don't even know where to start with you, man. It's, it, you have so much stuff on the table. It's crazy, man. Yes. That's you know my, my favorite joint is the joint, right? That's one of my favorite joints. Wow, that's crazy. That's 1997 back in yeah, business. That's right. one of my favorite joints when I was a little little kid. Wow. I was like, yo, my score stays on point like that. Yeah, <laughs> <yeah, laughs> <yeah. laughs> yes, the Yo, man, you win. might have to give me a verse after this, man, in the booth, man. You know oh, what I yeah, mean? Yo, that's Bring what that we back here to for, life, man. baby. Yo, you know what? what? I'm right there. So, let me let me just ask you. Uh EPMD has been through so much. Mhm. Um, and I know you always get questions about the breakup, all of this kind of stuff. Let's just talk about the beginning okay. of Paris Smith and hip hop. How did you know that? Um, and I was in a previous interview and I like what, what Cuban said to me. He said, you just have to have it. Yeah. When did you know you had it to be an MC? Uh, when I was 13. You know, because I got an older brother that's seven years older than me. He created a group called Smitty D and the Rock Squad that used to run with Zulu. And okay. this was before hip hop was to be called hip hop, when the Roxy was in effect, when the T Connection, Bronx River was in effect. And it just was the love for the art form that was yet to be called hip hop. So I was the little guy on the outside, just peeping it, astonished by the MC, mm -hmm. astonished by the DJ, astonished by the break dancer and the B boy and what it represented. It just was something that you felt and that you saw. And then as you observed it, you realized if you wanted to be a part of it, that you had to come with your A game or people would let you know. So watching my brother at 13, by the time I turned 17, 18, I was in line, I was up, and I stepped to the plate. And the first time at the plate, the ball left the park, and I ended up on Run's House Tour. Wow. With Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, with Will Smith, Public Enemy, Stetsasonic, and, you know, that A-League first team situation. And how did you and Eric connect? Did y'all, like, go to school together, or, like, what? Like, no, how did you? Eric moved Because you dudes, you know, are some are some. Big, tall dudes, pause. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. But y'all are. Like, when I see y'all, I see the basketball team. Yeah. Could you play ball? You play ball? Yeah. Uh, so, were you nice? So, you ball. just yeah, like. I was super nice. You go to my high school. My name is still up there. Like, if you really walk up. Wait, there, wait. Did they put it, it there after you started rapping? Or, you nah, know? that was before I even had a mic. That's when I was on the turntables. So oh, I so you were DJing? Yeah, I was DJ EZP because I came up under the DJ era, like Chubby Chubb, High Voltage, but more importantly, DJ Jazzy J. So okay. this is before he did Funky Sensation. So I watched regular DJs get busy and then take their busyness and go to vinyl. Okay. So at top of that, my brother was Smitty D rocking with his group, but I was DJ Easy P. That's why if you do your homework and you Google Facts of Life, you see me standing there with a turntable in my hand and a pair of gazelles at 15. At 15. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. So... What, all right, so you played sports. Did you play for you? You played for your school then, naturally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, do you, when did you say I'm not doing this no more? 
<laughs> uh, basically, when it's my thing and your customer sold about 150000 I was at a uh, summer camp at SCSU in New Haven. Okay. And we had three days where you had to get up in the morning, 6 o'clock, and then you had the afternoon session, and then you had the night session. You know, lucky for me, I got the single done before I went to football camp. And at football camp at night, we used to be up with the radio on, and then they would start playing the choppers. So when time the season really came, and then the music started moving, I started doing shows and was playing football at the same time. When Run DMC gave the call, can you come on the Run's house tour, that's when I walked across the turf, sat down, spoke with my coach, told him what I wanted to do, and he supported me. Then when the albums went gold and platinum, I went back across the same turf, and all of those plaques hung up against his wall. And the kids still talk about this to today on social media. Wow. So they used to go to get recruited for football and go in there with their parents and then see Strictly Business, Unfinished Business, Dodge Specs, Red Man, and be like, yo, what's the connection? He used to play here. And that used to motivate them to go to the school. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah, and the first album and most of the stuff, you know, the first A and B side I did when I was home, but a lot of Strictly Business I wrote going back and forth to New Haven and then to Manhattan. And keep in mind, I built the vehicle, the 68 Camaro, please listen to my demo. So I basically wrote my existence, and that was it. You're saying you're doing a lot of writing. Let me ask you a question. So you mean you wrote your parts, and Eric wrote his? Or you yeah. wrote, did you ever have to write, or did Eric ever have to write for you? No, nah, we always wrote our stuff. We only added little stuff like, why, there was smoke from the rubber he cooked. Like, just the little adjectives, like, in all so the you do, So you listen to had. Eric and be like, yo, yo, add this mm -hmm. there, because it sounds better. He was or he listened his to your joint. He was like, yo, I want P to say this. Or I'd be like, yo... I'll write minds and be like, you know, boom. And say this. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. And you were responsible for a lot of people's careers, like Daz FX, yep. Red Man, yep. uh, K Solo. That's correct, yep. Uh, who am I missing here? Um, I know Keith Murray was with EPMD as well. Um, well, Keith was like a student of the game coming mm -hmm. up, like when the Hit Squad was coming through in 1992. So he was there like when the shows were getting done, you know what I mean? And basically when EPMD stopped making music, that's when his career started. But he had enough knowledge of the lay of the land because he wasn't just a student studying the music. He would come out and like go to the shows. Sometimes you would look up, you see him at the shows. Mm -hmm. So and he that, wasn't getting paid. He was just there. Well, he was he was coming in. So it was after K Solo. Mm -hmm. Then it was Knuckleheads, Hurricane G. And then in that gap was when we stopped making music and then Keith came out and dropped his album, but he was an MC before getting put on. Now, it's my understanding that you were not just writing lyrics, you were also producing music. Right, for sure. <laughs> well, music was my first love because... Yeah, but you were producing. Like, like you, you, here you are, a lyrical phenomenon. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? One third of this group, and you're also... Because that, that side is never really told about how you produce records like you right. make music right right that's crazy that that's that that's the bugged out thing to me mm -hmm. like we always hear even when it comes to people's careers like you'll hear the, uh, occasionally a whisper but nobody yeah. ever truly recognizes that red man and all of these dudes you know have you to truly thank for mm -hmm. their careers and how you moved you know yeah. what i mean i it's just, just they realized, leave those things out you yeah. know what i mean like not too long ago like just you know when you're into the work i'm a tourist so you really and then playing football it's cool, you know how it go. You don't really need to be stroked to know something you do. I guess whatever, you know, but that's never been me. Like uh, the lyrics wouldn't exist without the music because mm -hmm. it's the music that motivates the rhyme. So a lot of those beats, like it's my thing, it was the beat while I was making it, the rhyme mm -hmm. would show up and then I would have to stop making the beat to be like MCs out there, you better stand clear, got that? UPMD is a world From premiere. New York straight talk. America's okay? best. And then when you get to Nick Knack Paddywhack, you're so in the beat, you ain't got to worry about it. Because while you're in the middle of that, you're like, you know what? I'm not going to worry about my rhymes. Uh -huh. When he come in, then boom, in the beginning, he's going to say Nick Knack Paddywhack. Okay? And then you can go to You Gots to Chill, put that together, know that you want to go You Gots to Chill, 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 but you just, you're putting something together with it's balanced music-wise, lyric-wise, mm -hmm. so once you hear it, you know, EPMD was known for the cassettes that you never touch to rewind or fast forward. You could just throw it in, except for it's time to party, which whatever. But that's yeah, I didn't really like that. that right. But that was business. <laughs> that was business. That's when you went to Sleeping Bag Records. I was like, like, whoa, son, what is this? <laughs> yo, what is this? Yo, this is Joy Sims, Technotronic. Yo, you on a club uh, label. 
You know I what I mean? Yeah, so like, boom. Whoa, man. And you overdid it, <laughs> you know, because that's the rock side coming through, mm -hmm. and you know, from school and football and stuff like that. But my whole point is the music always brought forth the rhyme. And then once you got in the game, you know, before the word haters, people see you get a gold album, a platinum album, go on tour with Run DMC, and they would begin to build the second album without even knowing. Because then they would put the pressure on you, sophomore jinx, you can't do this or do that, and then that's when you hit them with, so what you saying? And then they look at it and be like, oh yeah, mm, this is serious. Okay, there's the big payback. Yeah, that's another okay. dope record. And then once you get that, and it's okay, now that we done took care of that, here's- How you get NWA, I'm more. sorry, how'd you get NWA and all them dudes? Cause I, I looked at them, I'm like, yo, how you get NWA and all these dudes? Like I understood the regular crew in there, mm -hmm. but how'd you get, cause they were on the West Coast. Yeah. So like, how did you connect with them? Well, I had a great relationship with Easy e Rest in peace, Eric Wright. Mm -hmm. And the way what we did was we would take advantage mm -hmm. of every time we would catch up. So, again, it's like an alley-oop pass. Mm -hmm. You don't have to call up a person in California to try to get up with them to do a collaboration. If you're in the industry and you got music around, they got all of those stuff like uh, Yo! MTV Raps, uh, the BRE, remember Jack the Rapper back there, all that stuff. So we would get to run to each other outside of the studio and the music and that's where we would put our plan together so i remember running to uh easy we were somewhere in new orleans uh for your mtv raps the scene when we flew all out there on the plane and everything and uh, we spoke and the big payback was coming up we wanted to do something different we had a tremendous amount of respect in west coast the west coast thought we was from the west coast and on top of us saying we from brentwood long they didn't know long island so they thought we was from brentwood where oj was from oh okay now i'm about I mean, to say because you don't you did not sound like no, but the music blues. more bounced. That was riding music, you know, riding high. Please listen to my demo. That's like, I'm not talking about getting in your car and roll the window down. Type no, riding. you had, you right. You know what? The music you know, that you riding, guys riding. created was able to, because even today, um, LA artists and East Coast artists, even when a, a East Coast artist out there tries to pop, it takes a minute for the record to get felt. And I think it has to do with like the music and the melody mm -hmm. are different. You know what I mean? Not to mention the fact that most of L.A. is Latino. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Chicanos mm -hmm. with, with Rod. So I understood like Master Ace when he did that move out there and he had yeah. the joint. So I understood it. Now, I didn't understand it then. I was like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's, uh, to me, to be honest with you, with my 32 years experience, I think it's less about the music and more how you present yourself. Because you could have the biggest music in the world, but if your whole vibe ain't right, then ain't nothing happening. Because when same like when you come through New York, everybody moves the way they move. And you ain't going to come through if your vibe ain't right. You understand? So with us, we came through because, yo, you guys to chill, sound West Coast. And then when you met us, we looked and represented exactly the way you perceived it in the mind. Because what we hear a lot is when we go around, people love artists and they love the music. But then when they meet the artist, they kind of don't even like the artist or the music no more. And then the same thing with the crossover, Roger Troutman. That song went gold in San Francisco through, you know, you can't say whatever, but there was a radio station that showed us so much love because of the way it was arranged. Mm -hmm. But that had a lot to do with Eric and our relationship on the love that we showed in the game coming through, not only for the artist, but just for the, you know, whoever this person was trying to get on. Got you. So you have like major respect from like Jay-Z, Diddy, like, how does that feel to, like, you know, these dudes? Because they're iconic in their way. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. And they, they just, you know, you just, you just don't hear, like, it's, you hear a lot of love out of them when it comes to you guys. Mm hmm You know what I mean? Yeah, because with EPMD, that was the centerpiece. That was the centerpiece. And still, in my opinion, one of the centerpieces of the hip-hop culture at an intricate time. Mm -hmm. So, in my opinion, like, when we was rocking with Eric B. and Rakim, Slick Rick, Big Daddy Kane, Eric, uh, Rob Bass, Audio 2, MC Light, we were the last ones to come in on that, and that was an era. But then, through me creating the Head Squad, then I created my own era from a musical standpoint of view and from a business standpoint of view. And that's what it meant for the, to the hood and to the average person. It switched from trying, yo, put me on, to I can put myself on. But now, if you try to come out, you can't come out for Dolo because now you have this big thing called Head Squad that came with four groups, no nonsense, no holes barred with the music. So anybody who came in by themselves after that, you wouldn't even have a shot. 
So you would have to come in with a crew. You would have to come in with your own bread. And this is what we taught the errors behind us, and that's why the industry took off the way it took off. And you got billionaires now, not just multi-millionaires, but billionaires. So I'm from the era where we had to fight to make sure this culture and this art form wasn't a fad. They used to laugh this off and say, this is trash music, it ain't gonna make it. Mm -hmm. And we had to prove it, and then once we proved it, then it was here to stay, and then the next generation has benefited from it. So being from Long Island, you guys had, there are a lot of groups from L.I., De La Souls, the, damn, there's so many. Yeah. Uh, Busta Rhymes, Leaders mm -hmm. of the Biz Markey. Biz Markey. Mm -hmm. um, you guys I had initial, you know, he's one of my favorite artists too. You know, you guys are, but, you know, especially you. Yeah. But Rakim, I loved Rakim's music. He, you know, phenomenal dude. How did EPMD wind up in situation in a beef, so to speak? And was it both you and Eric in that beef, or was it just Eric? Because I used to just hear Eric's name questions. more than, <laughs> than you know what I mean. Yeah. And how did you like? How'd you guys eventually just squash it? Because naturally, I know you've well. Have the you, way has, to me, right? over, to right? me personally, I never had beef with Rakim. Uh, you know. And Eric B. and Rakim is one of the most respected dudes in the game just for the business. There's a story behind this. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to big shout out to Alvin Tony. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Alvin Tony's from Wine Dance. He's the guy that people reached out Which is for where from, uh, Rakim Island. is from, right? Rakim, right. And it's three towns away from us. Uh -huh. So, you know, you, you already worked with everybody, but now you're coming back figuring out how the whole thing happened. So Alvin connected Eric B. with Rakim. Mm -hmm. And then Alvin was the one who ran with me and Eric. Mm -hmm. Alvin was from Wine Dance, Rakim was from Wine Dance, we were from Brentwood. Mm -hmm. So it didn't matter what would happen out there while we was working. If something did go wrong, there was always a medium to communicate. Because uh, some of the stuff was verbal misunderstanding, and then some of them were lyrical misunderstanding. But no matter what, either at the show, or you going to a concert, or you going to Jack the Rapper, all the paths were crossed. Now it's easy. These guys just talk about it. That's it was different when we was coming up. Like, yo, if you talk that talk, this is what it is. This is stories that you don't go into. But with Rakim, I was always a student. You know, I used to go to Rakim's house. You know, I built a 68 Camaro. I would uh, go past there, see the, wine the 190 Benz sitting out there just looking like ridiculous, like a spaceship, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And was like, wow. And then I would go to the back door it would be a big sign that says, I'm in the lab, do not disturb. But I'd be like, knock, knock. <laughs> and Rakim would answer the door all the time. So now that, you know, I became who I became in life, I understand now why he would answer the door. Some people who don't know, that's a headache, and it could throw you off if they don't get it, so don't waste my time. But real ones could recognize the real ones. So Rakim always opened up that door. So I never got it mixed up. But as we begin to grow, people throw stuff in the game and they try to this and that and if you have the respect for someone every time you see them you're going to speak on it so it don't build up mm -hmm. now with eric and rakim that was a whole different ball game like different stuff like i don't know what was going on out there but i always knew that i stayed in tune to uh, rakim and every time i would speak to him he would really let me know where it is if it was good or if it wasn't good and then if it was good then it was cool if it wasn't good then you had to work things out Mm -hmm. But then after we took the break and got back up, they was basically Rakim, Kane, Slick Rick, Karis One, they were schooling me. Like, yo, this is what's up. This is how. See, all those people you named, and mm -hmm. I would definitely include yourself, I think you guys changed hip-hop. Yeah. That's another thing that I don't think that people acknowledge when it comes to a lot of that era, and especially EPMD. You changed hip-hop. Mm -hmm. Like, you changed the way hip-hop was done. Right, and how it was received and how the people dressed yeah, like, and the lingo like and the MC, words. Like, like you yeah. guys changed mm -hmm. how hip-hop was just, you know what I mean? And not yeah. a lot of people could say that. Some people might feel they did it solely, but when I think collectively, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you guys being a duo, having a phenomenal sound, coming yeah. out with the fisherman hats and the links and all of that. Well, yo. Looking crazy out there. And then yo, the sound. Slick Rick, well, hold on, like Slick Rick mm -hmm. telling stories. Mm -hmm. In his rhyme. And Dana Dane, he was good, but he wasn't Slick Rick. 
Right. And I and I used to see that because that but was Dane always was nice thing. though. Yeah, you know, Dane is nice. Dana Dana Dane, Dane is nice, but he wasn't and, 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 slick Rick. But like, when slick that came Rick on, right, that, right, 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 Lottie Dottie. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, yeah, for it sure. was just like like he. We he are was the mold that storytelling. Yes, yes. That whole. Story but now you got to understand, Slick Rick came from the kings and the queens of Europe, mm-hmm. so his perspective would definitely be different than ours. Who was like the British should come in. Those are two different things. Do you understand what I'm saying? Gotcha, yeah. So when he said crumbs, he really meant crumbs because when you stand before the king and the queen, you bow. Mm -hmm. And if you ain't what it's supposed to be, he wasn't making that up. That's where Rick really comes from. Rick the ruler has returned. So when he would say that, you'd be like, yo, until this day, you see the truck jewels. Like the, the yeah, he just has that aura of royalty mm-hmm. when he walks in, even yeah. even at this stage. You right. know what I mean? So it's it's crazy just to, to watch y'all. Rakim was the guard. You had KRS, just the teacher. Yep. Kane still was is like, the teacher. Kane was like like Jay-Z of that time. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? But, um, and Kane bought in Jay-Z. Yeah. So you got to look at, like I bought in Das FX. Like, you know, I set the tone and bringing in K-Solo with Nick Knack, Patty Wack, you know. Red Man, basically, I produced the tracks to the intro to all of these artists. So That's we're bringing crazy. Eric in on this, my thing, and you're That's a customer, crazy. you got to chill. K Solo, the Knick Knack, Patty Whack, that song. Red Man on uh, Red Man Ready to Rock, Rough Rhymes, meaning hardcore. And then Das Effects on Humming. And the whole point is when you get the gift and you're getting busy, it's as long as you can stay focused. That's why we was able to do those four albums. And today, to this day, people say there's not too many groups that was able to hit hip hop like that, consecutive back to back, and bringing the hit squad with artists that sold more than them. But see, that's the thing. Not, that part is never really mentioned. Mm-hmm. But it's still, yo, but it's still, it's still, still see, sucks. this it's is what like, people got to understand. This is something that's still happening. Hip hop is like, yo, man, it's not even 45, 50 years old. So it's like, but it's just that system has changed so much, man. And mm-hmm. it, and the thing I loved about that that you guys brought people in is that you weren't you you and I think that that's the problem even with DJs, like other DJs. And I'm not gonna say no names. They pass their time. It doesn't mean you can't DJ anymore, but don't block these young dude that's coming mm-hmm. up. You understand? You can't hold the crown forever. And I think that that's the problem with some of these DJs out there that they feel like, yo, I'm not letting nobody in here. I'm holding this chair, mm-hmm. and that's crazy because father time is father time. You are not going to master Father Time. Right. And the way you move and the way you do things is not going to stay on top. Everything has its transition. You guys transition music right. from one point to another. Right. And it's like a relay race. And you got to remember, for me, everything in life is you pass the baton. Right. And that's the problem with our people. Even when they talk about, I constantly hear old school. I don't like to say old school. I say classic hip-hop artists. Right, right. Because I believe As it's it classic. Be. Right. Yeah, well, you listen. Because none of the other genres talk about, yo, that's an old school country artist. They don't do that. They're just a country artist. Right, right, right. You know right. what I mean? Bon Jovi's but it's just, not that. Yeah, it's yo, just crazy. Uh, you know right. what I mean? The, the but the Stones. thing I appreciated was you brought these young dudes in and you pass them and now they've become iconic right you know what i mean but it's like that's not happening really now it's like you get somebody that's dope and you kind of like yo let me curve that dude so i can hold this seat and hold and yeah. your, your shit isn't as relevant anymore and that's just mm-hmm. a fact like we all at a certain age i can't run around with a bunch of high school dudes i can't run around with a bunch of kids in college no more mm-hmm. like i'm not in college no more when right. i was in college i was doing my thing right I left and I did my thing, and you know, and I went to college in Long Island, went to Old Westbury. You know what I mean? Right, right. So right. I was throwing parties and all that. I'm not mm. going back there. Yeah, I still know how to do things, but I'm not. I'm right. not in that era. And I think that that's the problem with a lot of a lot of things with our people, and especially in the music industry, people yeah, are blocking. Yeah, it's like it's uh, like the crabs in the barrel effect. Yeah. But again, when you build an empire and you have a legacy, it's like um, it don't. It's not just EPMD. It's like it rolls DOS effects. It rolls all of those guys. And then it also world, rolls uh, real world time and the young cats. So where we come from, we've been taught, yo, your existence is based upon how much service you do to the people around you. That's how you stay relevant. So we can be our age. But if we got an RJ running around that 23 to 24, if we got an Ace Bra running around that 23, 24, then we just the big guys coming in, checking their stuff, seeing what's up. But yo, listen. My show was ridiculous in Cincinnati with Slick Rick and Bobby Brown and Mary J. Blas and uh, what's it, Frankie Beverly Mays and Maxwell, like with police escorts. My show was packed just with me and Eric, this and that. So there's an audience that's coming out to these sold out shows. It's no different to the crossover. You know, you have a choice. Now, if we got to our shows and there was just one dude standing there, then that's a problem. 
But when you got a following and then you got these young artists coming in in the technology era, then mm -hmm. I myself believe, like, if you really want it and you believe in it, then you're going to come with what's, what's necessary to make it happen. Gotcha. And that's what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. Like, look at Sweet T. Look at RJ. Look at that type of energy in the studio. Look at the track. Like, that's what makes it fun. They don't know. They ain't see what you saw. They ain't see what I saw. So it's like, they're where we at when we drop, you're a customer and this my thing. And we used to stay in Texas for a whole week. And, yo, dudes would be on the side of the turntable when you was finished. They'd be like, yo, 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 can you do that again? Yo, and sometimes pull the needle back to start it over. And when you're in the house and like the rhinestone or whatever the case may be, yo, we saying you got to chill like four times in one night. You know, that's the real like, you know, plugged in like that. And that's what Sweet T and RJ is looking at if they can click and get theirs going. Yeah, and nah, I completely understand. I remember I was interning and I was doing uh, me and, uh, what was it, Steph Lover at Power. Oh, yeah. And they dropped... Um, and 50 had just dropped in the club. Yo, I don't know. I think we were supposed to get in trouble. We played that record for an hour straight. Mm -hmm. We kept bringing it back, bringing it back. She was like, yo, kept bringing it back, yeah. kept bringing it back, kept bringing it back. Yeah. And I think we got lucky because at that time, Power had just flipped. Doc Winters had changed it over to mm -hmm. from Jam 105 to Power 105. Okay. And we were just like, yo, yo. So I don't think nobody was really, like the up higher ups weren't really listening because it was all music really. And then it was starting to transition into jocks. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, and I, I mentioned that only because I understand what you're saying. Like, I couldn't believe that record. It was like you had to play it again, yep. play it again, literally for an hour. People calling up, play that record. And the again, momentum. So if you wasn't yeah, playing like, it, yo, then you was kind of out of yeah, pocket. Yeah, you was out of the pocket. Like, kind of they want effects with bumps, skitty, bumps. Out of the pocket. So what? You don't want to play it. The whole universe is playing it because this is what it is right now. You know? And then because of the business moves, when y'all came in, y'all had more freedom. Everything was more protocol and unbelievably tight. Mm -hmm. But then once we came with hip hop and they started loosening it up and it gave other cats opportunity. Yeah, that is crazy. So before I get out of here, you know, I, I try to stay away from all of that stuff. Yeah. But you know, I always gotta ask because the people wanna know. Yeah. EPMD, you guys broke up. Yeah. And you went through several transitions. My biggest question to you is not about so much why you broke up, because you've always answered those questions. How did it feel when you guys finally came back together and did that first show? Uh, for me, it felt incredible. And uh, it kind of was like a Run DMC moment because I've been blessed to see this up in the front row. And more importantly, during the downtime, I got to go home and learn a lot about myself, you know, self-awareness, and what the group means to hip hop. So when by taking that break and going home and realize, yo, you were just a regular dude walking to school, but you had a, a dream and belief, and you went and worked out a spot, put this money into this, it's kind of like my sister told me to watch that Rhapsody movie. And I, I seen the commercial, but I never stopped it. I didn't catch the whole thing, but the purpose was by people were worrying about how stuff was gonna get done. There was one person in the group that would say, yo, listen, we gotta get to the studio. So uh, this van we riding in right now, we gonna sell that. Now, the other people that they were like, no, nah, we can't sell it. Yo, we got to hold on to it. Then the big multi part platinum album wouldn't have never got recorded. But because they sold it, boom, look what the group turned into. And that's the same thing with us. We didn't break up because we was whack. We broke up because the universe never seen no pandemonium like that before. And you could either hit the break and keep going, or you could call the timeout and just really see what you created, understand the energy. And once you did plug back into where you left off, um, you can make it happen on another level. Because my biggest problem was what, what happens when I exceed the people I look up to in the industry? What happens when I pass them? What happens when I pass the MCs? Like, where do you go when the whole world's watching you and you got a problem? Do you keep going like you don't got a problem or do you call a timeout? So I call a timeout. So when we came back in 97, I was coming from rest, you know? Spent a lot of time in the mountains, Grand Canyon, all that other stuff. The whole point is, if you're a real hip hopper, Grand Canyon, wow, yeah, yeah, I've be, been to Bear Mountain. Nah, nah, I'd be, yo, <laughs> I I'd have be Grand way, Canyon money. Way. Then, player. But again, <laughs> keep in mind, it's not just like from a regular standpoint of view. It's like being in the game from '87 to '92 mm -hmm. and placing that energy in the right place, you gotcha. know, because uh, whatever level. So the answer to the question: Once we came in, we're back in business. It's the joint, the watch and you sample. Def Jam just moved up. Jay Z was on the rise. Dmx was on the rise. Ja Rule was on the rise. So we came back in, got to catch a breath, 
and then pick up and catch it in stride. And plus my partner E, so he never stopped. So he kept going. It was like tag team. Mm -hmm. And then after I was rested, then boom, once I caught it with Eric, it wouldn't be too long before I locked back into myself and picking up where I'm left off, talking to you right now. Know what I mean? It's hip hop. Why, and that's where we get, it's the joint. <laughs> right, stay on point because I'm feeling it. Brother's killing it, trying to duplicate the manuscript. That's impossible. Pray like and gospel, overcoming setbacks, jumping over obstacles. Like Evil Knievel on point like the needles, EPMDs like the Beatles, back with another sequel to hip hop. Check one, two, and you don't stop. Rap with mainstream R&B and pop. Now the world's shocked. E-dub back with Mike Doc. Like it or not, I'm about to turn it up another notch. Mock speed, I put it down for my seed. Raw Bree, acres with the D, because it's the joint. My squad stay on point. That's what it is. Thank you for coming out, brother. Yo, it's a pleasure. You. Always, you know I always like working yeah. with you. You know, you be on that polo ground at Marcy, you know, <laughs> grandma's from 601. So I'd be like, yeah, yeah. I hit you twice yesterday, son. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm preparing to double back around and run the same play again, but we good. <laughs> you know what I mean? So tell them your IGs, how they can get at you. Yes. Uh, it's PMD underscore Mike underscore Doc on IG, Instagram. Uh, on Facebook, it's... PMD parentheses EPMD and on Twitter is PMD of EPMD and just the regular white website is parasmith.com. That's what it is. Hip hop Thanks for coming all day, out, man. Happy to be here. Oh man, salute.